Do I gotta beat him? He's champion, and no one knows him. Joe Hip knows Seldon. Made his face look like hamburger. Tony Tucker knows him too. Got a jab like a jackhammer. No one knows him. That's because no one wants to. Bruce Seldon, Mike Tyson, Liberation, Champion versus Champion, Saturday, July 13th, live on pay-per-view from the MGM Grand. Call your cable or satellite company. Tyson says I've only got one punch, my jab. Well, ask Joe Hip about that punch. Ask Tony Tucker. Look him in the face and ask him. So Tyson thinks I've only got one punch? It works fine for me. Bruce Seldon, Mike Tyson, Liberation, Champion versus Champion, Saturday, July 13th, live on pay-per-view from the MGM Grand. Call your cable or satellite company. Bruce Seldon, if I won his title, I gotta beat him. He's champion, and no one knows him. Joe Hip knows Seldon, made his face look like hamburger. Tony Tucker knows him, too. Got a jab like a jackhammer. No one knows him. That's because no one wants to. Bruce Seldon, Mike Tyson, Liberation, Champion versus Champion, Saturday, July 13th, live on pay-per-view from the MGM Grand. Call your cable or satellite company. Bruce Seldon. If I won his title, I gotta beat him. Bruce Seldon. He's champion, and no one knows him. Joe Hip knows Seldon. Made his face look like hamburger. Bruce Seldon. Tony Tucker knows him too. Nine Street knockout. He got a great jab. Bruce Seldon. It's like a jackhammer. Always to the face. Bruce Seldon. No one knows him. Huh. That's because no one wants to. Bruce Seldon, Mike Tyson, Liberation, Champion versus Champion, July 13th, live on pay-per-view from the MGM Grand. For the second time in his four fights since leaving prison, Mike Tyson's short-term career hits a road bump. Right. Not many men can stop Tyson, but little germs apparently can. Mike Tyson was expected to beat up Bruce Seldon on July 13th and take his WBA belt in the process, but that will not happen. ESPN has learned that after canceling a public workout today in Las Vegas, Tyson pulled out of his heavyweight title fight with Seldon because of bronchitis-like symptoms. The title fight has been rescheduled for September the 7th. Tyson was supposed to work out today at the MGM Grand Hotel, which is the site of the bout. That was canceled, fueling speculation that the whole thing was off. Tyson was reportedly going to see a doctor and then to be checked by the Nevada State Athletic Commission. In any case, that bout with Selden is off until September. This is the second time since Tyson was released from prison that he's had a bout postponed. In November, Tyson pulled out of his fight with Buster Mathis Jr. because of a broken thumb. Tyson would then come back six weeks later to beat Buster in three rounds. Stu? Selden will get to hold on to his WBA heavyweight title a little longer than expected. ESPN has learned that Selden's bout with Mike Tyson has been postponed because Tyson is ailing with bronchitis-like symptoms. The bout was originally scheduled for July the 13th, but now it's been pushed back to September the 7th. Tyson canceled the public workout scheduled for today at the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas. He was reportedly going to see a doctor and then to be examined by the Nevada Athletic Commission. In a conference call on Monday, Tyson said he was healthy and ready to fight, but the bout is now off. Stu? As of this morning, Mike Tyson and Bruce Selden were scheduled to meet July 13th in Las Vegas. As of now, though, the best fight next week in Vegas may just be between a pit boss and a drunk at the roulette table over just what the drunk considers an odd number. With the story of the Tyson fights knockout, here is Nick Charles. The doctor treating Mike Tyson is also employed by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, and both are satisfied his illness makes a fight next Saturday impossible. He's been under treatment. His progress has been very slow. He's been unable to train, essentially, uh, because of his bronchitis. He is recovering, but not recovered full enough uh, for uh, him to be 100%. And in my opinion, I don't think that he would be ready uh, for
for a uh, heavyweight championship bout. I say he hasn't been able to train completely for three weeks, meaning he would go in there for, and, and he would be able to box a few rounds, but he wouldn't be able to finish his calisthenics. He'd go in there and he'd, be, and he'd do the heavy bag. He wouldn't be able to box as long as he wanted. He was short of breath all up for, for the first two weeks he were here. This is the third time in Tyson's last five scheduled fights that he's had to postpone or cancel. He pulled out of a 1991 fight with Evander Holofield because of a rib injury. Then last October, preparing for his second fight after being released from prison, broke a bone in his thumb, pushing back his meeting with Buster Mathis Jr. six weeks. Now bronchitis. But Tyson's management said given his condition and lack of preparation, a fight next Saturday night would be a mistake for all concerned. If you paid your money to see Mike Tyson in 10 days from now, you wouldn't get the best of Mike Tyson. So who, who, who would be fooling who? That's when we would be in the wrong. Mike Tyson is, it needs to be protected to the point where he's healthy, and then you can give him anybody you want. And that's the person that everybody wants to see. As for the possibility of the Selden fight, which hadn't sold out, now being shoved to the back burner so Tyson could take on Lennox Lewis and his $45 million offer, no more hiding behind a tree and under the rock. But Lennox Lewis was offered 13 and a half million dollars to fight Mike Tyson and he turned it down. He opted to take four million dollars and run like a thief in the night and hide and try to play the game like he wanted to fight. King said he'll announce next week a new date for the Selden fight, most likely in September. Nick Charles, CNN Sports. Apparently, the only thing that can lick Mike Tyson these days is bronchitis. With his WBA title bout with Bruce Selden 10 days away and ailing Tyson pulled out Wednesday, it's the third time in his last five scheduled fights that Tyson has postponed or canceled a bout. Tyson's manager and doctor said the bronchitis set him too far back to fight Selden on July 13th. Well, since Mike's been in town, Mike has not had a full day's workout like he would normally have anyway. He's been feeling weak. He is recovering, but not recovered full enough uh, for uh, him to be 100%. And in my opinion, I don't think that he would be ready uh, for a uh, heavyweight championship bout. The title fight has been rescheduled for September 7th. Don King denied Tyson is setting a pattern of postponement. Said King, I will continue to take the high road and say that this is one of those things that happens to human beings. Turning to boxing now for Bruce Selden, it wasn't so much postponing a fight as it might have been postponing the inevitable. Selden got a reprieve from his fight against Mike Tyson on July 13th because Tyson came down with bronchitis, but a reprieve is not a pardon after all. The fight between Tyson and Selden has been rescheduled for September 7 at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. You'll recall Tyson postponed his November fight against Buster Mathis Jr., only to come back six weeks later and knock him silly. Who knows when the next heavyweight championship fight is? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? How about September 7th? Mike Tyson and Bruce Selden mix it up in Las Vegas just over three weeks from today. And today, Tyson did some ring work at the MGM Grand. And as he likes to say, he was throwing punches with bad intentions. At least that's what it looks like. Mike just about wearing out those training pads he's pounding on right there. Afterwards, Tyson was asked about his time in jail. He answered, in part, referring to other heavyweight fighters. The only thing I was treated different than other inmates was that I was treated worse than they were because I was Mike Tyson. And God forbid if any of those guys went in prison after some of those holders and all those guys said them nasty things about, God knows what they would have been doing because they might not have been able to take it. They'd have probably been wearing makeup. I don't believe in, I don't believe in rehab. I don't believe in rehabilitation. I believe some people are smarter than others and they watch the the next time they get in, they get out of trouble. There's no such thing as re rehabilitation. It's just, I didn't like that experience, so I'm not going to go that route anymore to get in trouble no more. But you know, I'm, I'm still capable of doing the same thing. Bruce Seldon, if I won his title, I got to beat him. He's champion, and no one knows him. Joe Hip knows Seldon, made his face look like hamburger. Tony Tucker knows him too. Got a jab like a jackhammer. No one knows him. That's because no one wants to. Bruce Selden, Mike Tyson, Liberation, Champion versus Champion, Saturday, September 7th, live on pay-per-view from the MGM Grand. Call your cable or satellite company. So, on September 7th, WBA heavyweight champion Bruce Selden fights WBC champion Mike Tyson. The best boxer meets its hardest puncher. So, we'll be unlucky for one of them. So. Also on the 7th, Felix Trinidad defends his welterweight title against dangerous Ray Lovato. 
This will be Trinidad's seventh title defense. Seven. And super welterweight champion Terry Norris fights Alex Rios. Seven. It could be his 50th win or seventh loss. Seven. Plus on the seventh, boxing's newest sensation, Christy Martin. Many say she's the world's best woman fighter. Now you'll see why. Seven. Saturday, September. Seven. Liberation, champion versus champion. Three championship fights plus Christy Martin. Live on pay-per-view from the MGM Grand. Seven. For most people, it's lucky. Seven. For some, it isn't. Live, Saturday night, September 7th, on Request Pay-Per-View. Sen may want Bruce Seldon's title, but he may not be willing to pay the price. Seldon, Tyson, champion versus champion, live on Pay-Per-View. Stop by your nearest Subway store for a coupon for $5 off Tyson vs. Selden on Impulse Entertainment and find out how you can win a trip for two to the fight at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Selden, Tyson, champion vs. champion, live on pay-per-view. Two-thirds of the divided heavyweight title were linked together Tuesday in Los Angeles. WBC champion Mike Tyson and the WBA's Bruce Seldon were together for the first time since their July 13th fight was postponed. Mike Tyson had bronchitis then, but Tuesday he looked healthy and he sounded dead serious. You know, my main objective is just to fight. You know, I don't look in the front, I'm in the front and say, well, well, that's a good jab. He has a good jab. Well, I respect that. That's good. No, I'm just, I just want to kill them. You know, just do my best. I, you know, I, maybe it is I'm trying to just clean it up from the parole officer listening to me. Yeah, I think maybe I just feel I have the feeling of killing somebody, I guess. I don't think I can really kill them, but I feel like I want to kill somebody. Bruce Seldon? Yeah, anyone who I'm fighting. I want to break his will. I want to break his will early. I want to get him to know that, that you're not fighting a tomato can this time, champ. You know, it's not a tomato can, champ. You know, things aren't the way they used to be, champ. You know, um, this isn't, this isn't Buster Mathis you're fighting, this is Bruce Seldon. Seldon Tyson will happen nearly two months later than originally planned. Mike Tyson, though, is already looking ahead to November 9th, when after a five-year delay, we've learned he and Evander Holyfield will finally come to terms. Nick Charles, CNN, Los Angeles. Now, as for Holyfield, he hasn't fought since beating up overstuffed middleweight Bobby Chiss. Inga. Welcome back to Sports Center. It's either Hands Across America 2 or the Mike Tyson Bruce Seldon presser. Iron Mike will throw hands with his old sparring partner September 7th. He knows what I can do. He knows what I'm gonna do. If he doesn't, he's gonna find out. I know what it takes to defeat each and every opponent that is put in front of me. I am a champion. I have to have the heart of a champion. I have to fight like a champion. And on September 7th, you truly will see Bruce Seldon fighting his off. Ladies and gentlemen, fighting out of Catskill, New York, presenting the youngest man ever to win the heavyweight crown and the last to unify it in the ring. His record includes 44 victories in his 45 bouts, including his most recent victory, a third round knockout over Britain's Frank Bruno to capture the first title in his comeback trail. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. Here is the one and only Iron Mike Tyson. And his opponent is the defending world champion from Atlantic City, New Jersey. His record includes 33 victories and 29 of them coming by way of knockout. He is making the second defense of his title. Here is the WBA heavyweight champion of the world, known as the Atlantic City Express, introducing Bruce Seldon. It's champion versus champion, Seldon versus Tyson, a championship story. When Bruce Sheldon and Mike Tyson enter the MGM Grand in Las Vegas, the arena will come alive with an indescribable, almost tangible excitement. For this fight will be the first in almost nine years that two reigning heavyweight champions will fight it out in the ring. 
Hi, I'm Steve Albert, and welcome to Selden vs. Tyson, a championship story. In 1987, Mike Tyson became the last to unify the three splintered heavyweight titles. Now, nearly one decade later, after dominating Britain's Frank Bruno and winning the WBC title, he is hoping to repeat history and regain past glory by once again becoming the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. But standing in his way is the fastest, most athletic opponent of his coming, WBA champion Bruce Selden. So what you got here is an all-time, old-fashioned war. Tyson and Selden is going to be a nuclear explosion. Over the next half hour, we will not only be looking at both fighters, but bring you a remarkable interview with Mike Tyson, describing the pressures of being one of the most celebrated, yet most vilified athletes in the world today. We start with a look at the background and comeback of Mike Tyson. Turning pro at the age of 18, Mike Tyson would go on to win 37 straight bouts, unify the heavyweight championship, and become the most dominating fighter of his generation. Surprisingly enough, it had all been predicted years earlier by the most important, most influential figure in Tyson's life, legendary trainer, Customato. After boxing in a New York State reformatory, the tough 14-year-old from Brooklyn moved into D'Amato's Catskill home. And there, Tyson learned more than just boxing. I learned more about life than cussing I ever would learn about boxing, I think. Many believe Tyson slowly drifted away from the teachings of D'Amato. But now, since his incarceration, he is anxious not to repeat past mistakes and eager to regain the future that once was his. And to do so, he has returned to the ways of his mentor. Cuss gave me confidence. He praised me every day. And he praised me to the um, degree at which he made me believe everything he said about me. For his return to the ring, Tyson enlisted surrogate brother and D'Amato disciple Jay Bright to be his trainer. Cuss's style is a mixture of aggressiveness and defensiveness. And it's a very hard style to master, but it's the most effective style. In his first fight back, Tyson trounced a hopelessly outclassed Peter McNeely in just 89 seconds. I knew this guy wasn't able to take anything I had to dish out, but I was just happy to be in the ring. Four months later, he systematically destroyed Buster Mathis Jr. in three rounds. I used to be a man of the time. The first punch stung him, but I know the second punch hit him on the top of the head on the side, and he was unable to get up. Then, in the most formidable challenge of his comeback, Tyson met Frank Bruno for the WBC title. Bruno, a 13-year veteran and winner of 40 bouts, seemed surprisingly intimidated by the smarter Tyson. That's the objective of fights, I mean, to, to make the man intimidate. He wasn't intimidated, I'm sure, because of my appearance, and perhaps because of more what I'm capable of doing. Effectively employing D'Amato's style, Tyson dominated the bout. What Mike Tyson was doing was taking the fight away from Frank Bruno. He was not allowing Frank Bruno to hit him while he hit Frank Bruno with devastating combinations. Tyson laying it on, pouring it on, down goes Bruno into the ropes. While it is easy to understand the magnitude of the fight and the importance of the victory, many were surprised by the unbridled joy and emotional behavior of the normally stoic D'Amato disciple. This title is for my dear mentor, Customato. When he said, I want to dedicate this fight to my mentor, Customato, that was a very, very warm moment for me. I, I loved it. I thought that was very great. I thought that was excellent. I thought that was a very sensitive moment. I did it for him. You know what I mean? I did it for him. I don't know. He said, um, he just deserves a lot, I believe. You know what I mean? He just deserves a lot. To me, he was just always my friend. Now, in the tranquil farmlands of northern Ohio, Tyson trains for the next step in his quest to unify the heavyweight title. But as he prepares to meet the determined WBA champion, Bruce Selden, he knows he is fighting to keep the memory of Customato alive. I had a great teacher, man, and I was, and I was a, a good listener when I wanted to listen. And as long as I reign, he reigns with me. And now, hoping to derail Mike Tyson's comeback, the Atlantic City Express, Bruce Selden. 
I'm Steve Albert, and welcome back to Selden vs. Tyson, a championship story. When Bruce Selden makes the long walk from the dressing room to the ring to defend his WBA championship against Mike Tyson, it will be the culmination of a career spent beating the odds. In the shadow of opulence and the wealth of the boardwalk casinos, Selden grew up on Atlantic City's west side amid the graffiti, violence, and shattered lives of the streets. Arrested for grand larceny at the age of 16, Selden was sentenced to 10 years at Annandale Correction Facility, one of New Jersey's toughest prisons. But when he joined its boxing team, he found his calling and created a future few, if any, would have believed possible. That's when I picked up my first set of boxing gloves and I put them on and I said, hey, I got talent and I know how to box. It was that talent and a concerted effort to turn his life around which granted Selden an early release from a 10-year sentence. I took my experience and my time being incarcerated, and I put all that together. And here I am today, heavyweight champ of the world. Relying on power, speed, and athleticism, Selden won his first 18 fights, 15 by knockout. Suddenly, he was a big man in a small city and his popularity began to soar. But in 1991, Selden's incessant partying and lack of discipline finally caught up with him. In less than six months' time, he lost to Oliver McCall and Riddick Bowe. And one year later, he lost a 10-round decision to Tony Tubbs. I took my, my three losses, and I kind of just brushed them off because I said to myself, in the sport of boxing, one man has to win, one man has to lose. That's, that's the rules, you know? So when I took those, those three losses, it kind of, you know, it kind of woke me up. Over the next two years, a rededicated and determined Selden won eight straight bouts by knockout. Using a powerful jab to set up his opponents, he earned a reputation as one of the most skilled technicians in the heavyweight division. I'll be tough, be strong, knock these guys right out. And that's how I did it. I dreamed being heavyweight champ of the world. Everybody dreams the impossible dream. You know, they never expect it to happen until it happens. And it did finally happen. Selden's dream came true last April when he faced Tony Tucker for the vacant WBA heavyweight championship. Because my jab was working so good that night, I seen it in his eyes that he was getting real frustrated. He was getting frustrated because he couldn't get next to me. There's that beautiful doubling up of the jab by Selden. Former standout Diego Rosario shouting instructions at Bruce Selden, saying, stick with the plan, box him, and you've got his eyes shut. Beautiful round for Bruce Selden. And with his eye nearly closed, many, including Selden, wondered how much more Tucker could take. When the bell sounded, the way he started to come out, I kind of seen he was he was slowing down. He was getting real sluggish. And I was in great shape. I was in tremendous shape. So right then, I kind of knew the fight was mine. Ah. The winner by way of technical knockout and the new WBA heavyweight champion of the world, the Atlantic City Express, Bruce. Selden. It was the greatest moment in my life. It was a dream come true. I felt like crying. I felt like laughing. I felt like laying down on that canvas like I did. I was just so happy. Four months later, Selden carried his championship belt into the ring against a seasoned Joe Hill. Selden uh, has been effective with the left jab. It's not only a probing jab, but it's an effective, strong jab. I like to be up in that ring, 230, 235 pound guy, muscle built guy, moving around that ring, staying on his toes, boxing, looking like a Muhammad Ali of old. Boxing, moving, utilizing a good left jab. I just wonder if I can pump my jab and just keep my jab going all night long and eventually win the fight. Our referee in charge, Richard Steele, stops the contest, and the winner by way of technical knockout, and still WBA heavyweight champion of the world, the Atlantic City.
Comedy Express, Bruce Seldon. Now, almost one year later, Seldon expects to beat the odds one more time when he steps into the ring against one of the most respected champions in the history of the sport, Mike Tyson. Tyson's just another man. He's not invincible. He can be beat. My game plan, man, is to just get up there in that ring and do my best. And I'm training, and I'm training, because I know this is the most important fight of my life. My heart is just as big as your heart, you know? I'm not afraid of you. I'm taller than you, I'm faster than you, and I have a longer reach than you. And I have a good left jab, and I have great athleticism. So it's going to be a tremendous fight, and I'm, I'm so anxious, man. I, I, I truly can't wait for this fight. And now, as you have never seen him before, the man behind the myth, Mike Tyson. Hi, I'm Steve Albert, and welcome back to Selden vs. Tyson, a championship story. In 1987, a charismatic and ferocious 20-year-old Mike Tyson beat Trevor Burbick to become the youngest fighter in boxing history to win the heavyweight championship. And with that victory, the public's interest and the media's fascination with Tyson turned his life into a bewildering carnival of facts, fiction, and lurid drama. But five years later, it came to a sudden and immediate halt. Former world champion Mike Tyson is now inmate Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson once on top of the world. He was handcuffed and fingerprinted. Risk. Since his release, Tyson has consistently refused to allow his personal life to once again be turned into a media circus. But as he prepares to fight Bruce Seldon for the WBA heavyweight title, he spoke freely about the pressures and problems he must now confront. I was away for four years and I've been in prison and I've been through a great deal of degradation and disrespect. But you can't expect somebody to get over something in a year that he dealt with for three and a half years. I think that prison is it really just did a number on me, and it's hard to really explain. Tyson now lives and trains in the secluded farm country of Ohio, far from the pressures of fame and temptations of the past. Look at my situation. I allowed myself, you know, even though other people contribute to it, I have to carry the weight of a fool. You know what I mean? I, I, didn't, um, I didn't create this image alone, but I'm the only one that has to carry it alone. Despite his reluctance for publicity and insistence on privacy, Tyson knows he stands on the brink of boxing greatness. I never want to put myself in a position where I feel that I'm great. That's a vulnerable position to be in when you think you're invincible. So I just never want to be in that position where I believe that I'm invincible when I was younger. To this day, I sometimes I say, how the hell do I get here? You know, because I look at myself, I'm not the biggest guy, I'm not the strongest guy in the world. And I say to myself, what am I doing here? And I've been doing this since I've been 12 years old, fighting competitively, and I say, what am I doing here? Look at me, I'm short. I got this probably the shortest reach in heavyweight history. You know what I mean? And I've been one of the most successful heavyweights. And that's what comes, it's just um, the will to win and the desire to overcome adversity. Tyson still possesses the power, the speed, and the ferocity he needs to succeed in the heavyweight division. But he is trying to curb the anger and channel the aggression he often exhibited towards his opponents outside the ring. For he believes this behavior is unnecessary and unwarranted. Oh. I don't want to humiliate anyone. I've been humiliated too much. I've seen too many people humiliated. And I really never understand the effect of humiliation until I went to prison. When Tyson recently defeated his longtime rival, Frank Bruno, to regain the WBC championship, many were surprised by what happened just moments after his victory. And Mike Tyson over to console Frank Bruno. I'd love to find out what he's saying to him. I was just saying, um, basically, thank you very much for the opportunity. And you know what I mean? I respect you a great deal as a man, and I, and I love you as well. And um, I just wanted to show him my respect. Tyson's more mature, more disciplined attitude, however, has not diminished his confidence or extinguished his competitive fire. 
for as he prepares to meet the determined Bruce Seldon for the WBA championship, he is eager to fight and hungry to win. Like 10 years ago, I would have called him so many names and told him, yeah, you know what you got coming, but I find it much easier than just to do it than to say. Ladies and gentlemen, parting shots and final words. When Mike Tyson meets Bruce Seldon at the MGM Grand, he will be fighting for more than just another championship, for it will mark the first time since he unified the titles almost nine years ago that two heavyweight champions will face off in the ring. And I've been doing this since I've been 12 years old, fighting competitively. I'm blessed with being able to fight well, and I use it to my advantage. You know, I just want to win and work more than everyone else. While Bruce Seldon may respect Tyson's many accomplishments, the WBA champion believes it is now his time to rule the division and earn a place in boxing history. He's a tremendous fighter. He still has that aggressiveness, and he still has that good power. But it's a new day and age now. Bruce is... It's calculated, he's methodic, he wants to inflict pain. Tyson, on the other hand, is surgical, you know what I mean? He wants to knock you out. It's a pure six brawl, a knockdown, drag him out fight. It ain't gonna be nobody giving in. No one is gonna get a free lunch here. You know what I mean? You got to be in shape and be in condition because you can't call time out and sit in a substitute. You're in the center of that ring. There's no gas station in sight. So if you run out of gas, you're in trouble. You understand? So it's going to be the lateral movement, the dexterity, the desire. Who wants it the most? It's going to be super sensational. Along with this fight between Bruce Sheldon and Mike Tyson for the WBA heavyweight title. WBC and IBF 154-pound title holder Terry Norris will be using his great speed and skill to defend his two championships. Plus, IBF welterweight champ Felix Trinidad, one of boxing's best, will be putting his undefeated record and seven-bout knockout streak on the line. And you'll have a chance to witness Mike Tyson's favorite fighter, Christy Martin. I watch her, she does things that I do, but she does them better than I do. Here comes Martin turning it up. Oh, down goes Cogarty. Martin has Cogarty cornered. Christy Martin unloads the bombs. She twists and she, when she slips, she hooks when she comes back, and she moves, slips and slips when she comes back. That's what I used to do when I was young. I was great at that stuff. I gotta start doing that stuff again. You can see Bruce Seldon versus Mike Tyson and more world title bouts live Saturday, July 13th on pay-per-view. I'm Steve Albert, and thanks for watching this edition of the Showtime Championship Boxing Report. Bruce Seldon says he won't pull any punches when he fights Mike Tyson Saturday night in Las Vegas. Says Seldon, I'm going to let it all hang out. I'm going to have to eat my Wheaties and be on my game. This is a fight that will lift me to superstardom. Seldon also feels Tyson's lost his drive. Tyson's retor retort, retort, everybody knocks me out with their mouth. Everybody kills me with their mouth. Like Tyson, Seldon has used boxing as a way to escape a difficult and troubled childhood. Charlie Steiner reports. Bruce Seldon keeps having this dream. Me and Mike Tyson going 12 rounds. He gives me a standing eight count. I give him a standing eight count. He cuts me. I cut him. The fight goes 12 rounds. At the sound of the 12th round, the bell, 
My dream ends. I wake up out of my dream. And I had this dream three times. So um, I'm anxious. I want to see how that dream turned out. Selden's long journey began on the mean streets of Atlantic City, behind bars for four years at the age of 16 for armed robbery, before ultimately getting into the mainstream. At a young age, I started, God forgive me for it, but I started playing with guns. And um, I picked up a gun one day, and, 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 and I put it to somebody's face, and I got caught, and I went to prison for that. 1985, they started a boxing team. And just, just guys throughout the prison started saying, man, you got so much energy, you know what I'm saying? You got so much in. Why don't you start boxing? Why don't you pick up, pick up a pair of boxing gloves? He did, and the move turned Selden's life around. After winning the prison heavyweight title in New Jersey, Selden was set free in 1987 and turned professional a year later, winning his first 18 fights. But back-to-back -back losses to Oliver McCall and Reddick Bowe in 1991 dropped Selden back down the heavyweight ladder. The boxing world kind of like forgot about me. They kind of like stepped on me. They said, here's this big Adonis body type of guy. Everybody's looking at me to being somebody, but everybody thought I, you know, was just a guy with a nice body that couldn't really fight, that had a glass chin. But Selden has lost just once since then. And when George Foreman was stripped of his WBA championship for not fighting Tucker, then the number one contender, Selden, stepped in and took out Tucker in seven to win the title. On April 8th, 1995, when Mills Lane came over to me and said, you're the champ of the world. I could have done a Three Stooges act, man. I could have laid on that floor and spun around in circles. I was so happy, man. I was so excited. Every day, every single day, we sit down and we talk. And Bruce says to me, you know, I got a lot to prove, not only to the people, but to himself. But why will this fight be any different than any of the other Tyson comeback efforts, none of which has gone past the third round? Whether Frank Bruno was intimidated or whether he uh, was just uh, froze up or whatever, he got caught up in whatever. But he just stood there, and it's just like Mike just hitting that heavy bag. He was right there. And, you know, standing in front of Mike Tyson is not the thing to do. He's more of, a, of, of an animal that, 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 that goes right after his prey, you know, without, without looking at the possibility of his prey getting away from him. And if he does get away, and if one of the better jabs in boxing can be more than just a nuisance to Tyson, maybe Selden can do what only one man has done before him. Just looking at that tape and saying, God, I could imagine how Buster Douglas felt that night. You know? I could imagine if I could have been in his soul that night, I could imagine how he felt knowing that he beat the baddest man considered on the planet. You know, I could imagine what was going through his body when he, when they raised his hands in victory. And I just, you know, I look at that and I say, I want that to be me. I want, I want to feel that feeling. Selwyn's record is 33 and 3 with 29 knockouts. Tyson 44 and 1 and 3 and 0 since he got out of prison on March 25th, 1995. Coming up, and approaches for Mike Tyson and Bruce Selden. They did some verbal sparring today. I'm in the hurt business, and this is what I do, and I enjoy what I do. Mike Tyson's not going to defeat me. Mike Tyson's not going to take my title from me. Buster Douglas is the only boxer to ever beat Mike Tyson. Bruce Selden is well aware of that. He has watched the Douglas-Tyson bout over and over again as he gets ready for his bout against Tyson on Saturday night. Like Douglas, Selden's best punch is a jab. But it was Tyson who had the best verbal jab of today's pre-fight press conference. I went through some war deals. I'm, I got out of prison. I'm still dealing with some situations that... I may just go back and see, but I'm just happy to just be around and to just continue doing what I do best. And this is what I do. This, this, you know, regardless of not, you know, I me, mean, I'm pious and I'm humble. I'm in the hurt business, and this is what I do. I feel as though, you know, I have to be confident, and I feel as though Mike Tyson's not going to defeat me. Mike Tyson's not going to take my title from me. More on the press conference and a look ahead to Saturday night's bout later on this edition of Sports Center. Selden may need an iron jaw to have a wisp of a chance against Mike Tyson on Saturday night. Selden is a 20 to 1 underdog. Tyson looking to add the WBA belt to his rebuilt collection of hardware. Today, the final pronouncements and the unique spectacle of the boxing press conference. Mark Schwartz was there.
Mike Tyson and Bruce Seldon endured yet another mind-numbing and monotonous Don King promotion, which was billed as a press conference, during which the self-inflicted blows Tyson sustained on the dais could be among the most punishing he'll suffer all week. Seldon is about as anonymous a champion as you'll ever find, certainly in the heavyweight ranks. Like Tyson, he has served time in prison, and like Tyson, he's endured the tragic deaths of his mother and of his mentor. But that's about where the comparisons end. Tyson remains the most formidable fighting force on the planet. Seldon won his title by stopping a spent 36-year-old named Tony Tucker. This is something that I dreamed of for a long time, you know. Yeah. And on April 8th, on April 9th, when I woke up that morning and looked on my dresser and seen that I was the heavyweight champion of the world, I knew that this day was definitely going to be in my future. When uh, Mike Tyson was released from prison, I knew that eventually him and I would have to fight. I went through some ordeals. I'm, I got out of prison. I'm still dealing with some situations that I may just go back and see, but I'm just happy to just be around and to just continue doing what I do best, and this is what I do. This is, this, you know, regardless of not, you know, me, I'm pious and I'm humble. I'm in the hurt business, and this is what I do. What we have here is a fighting machine, the best that ever lived. I believe, and I think history will dictate that if they can keep both of us out of jail. <laughs> yeah. You know, I never thought that I would be here in this, in this spot, you know what I'm saying? But I want to give all thanks to you guys, you know what I'm saying? You guys are great. You know, I have no bad words for you guys at all. All right, I'm joined now by USA Today boxing columnist John Saraceno. And John spoke to Bruce Seldon. He said he's been through a championship bout, but admitted he's never been through anything like this before. How did he handle his first major event? Well, Mark, I think he did a smart thing by stuffing the trash talk a lot of fighters use against Mike Tyson. But in a sense, all the handshaking and glad handing and thanking of Tyson, I think, really works against Bruce Seldon. I think he showed too much uh, respect for him, and I think uh, he was in too much awe of the champion. Now, Tyson has this sense for people. How might he capitalize on Seldon's activities? Well, Tyson definitely picked up on those signals. Any fighter would and perhaps sense that Seldon could be a little intimidated. I think Tyson will come at Seldon more aggressively than he may have normally because Seldon's a very good jabber. I think the fight could go less than five rounds. All right, John, on Friday we'll have full coverage of the Tyson-Seldon weigh-in. That'll be on the 630 Sports Center. Reporting from the MGM Grand in Las Vegas with John Saraceno, I'm Mark Schwartz, ESPN. Okay, guys, also part of today's festivities in Vegas, a ceremony as the WBC honored Don King as he is now promoting his 200th WBC fight. We're all sort of tired of hearing. Athlete says, I don't get any respect, and usually we don't buy into it. But you'd think the least Mike Tyson could do is get Bruce Seldon's name right in the press conference. He called him Sheldon. After all, the guy just used to be a sparring partner. Tyson and Seldon will spar for real Saturday night. Now our Mark Schwartz is in Vegas for the verbal jabs and misjabs. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. We'll see just how much Tyson and Seldon weigh Friday. Coverage of the tipping of the scales during the 6.30 Eastern Sports Center. Well, if it was a bodybuilding contest, Bruce Seldon would have a great shot at winning. Seldon is the WBA heavyweight champion. He has a body that appears to have been sculpted out of granite. But what is his jaw made of? Not to mention his heart. We'll find out. Tomorrow, Seldon will defend his title against Mike Tyson in Las Vegas. Iron Mike's first real test since coming out of prison. They held the weigh-in today in Las Vegas. Tyson looking confident at 219 pounds. Seldon actually heavier at 229. And Bruce Seldon hopes to be the 1996 version of Buster Douglas. You know, I look at Buster Douglas when he beat Mike Tyson. I also watch the, you know, I look at the fight, how he beat him, what it took to win. But I mainly pay attention to what he said after the fight, when he said how he stayed relaxed and he stayed calm. And he didn't let Tyson, nor Team Tyson, get up under, the, under his skin. Now, the tale of the tape shows the two men are, are pretty close in size. Seldon does have an 8-inch advantage in his reach. That'll help because Seldon is known for a strong jab, but he does not have tremendous punching power. That could be a problem. Other numbers of note, Tyson will make $15 million, Seldon 5 mil. Vegas, a late trickle of Bruce Seldon money has dropped Mike Tyson to a 17-to-1 favorite for tomorrow night's heavyweight championship fight. But Seldon just ain't a heavy underdog. He's the heavier fighter. The ritual of assessing the beef, the weigh-in. Mark Schwartz was scale-side. For Bruce Seldon, there is no turning back. 
He went eyeball to eyeball with Mike Tyson at Friday's weigh-in, only 32 hours before he must step into the ring against Iron Mike. He is the current WBC heavyweight champion of the world. Here is Iron Mike Tyson. Two hundred nineteen pounds for Iron Mike Tyson, the WBA heavyweight champion of the world, known as the Atlantic City Express. Please welcome Bruce Seldon. Two hundred twenty-nine pounds for Bruce Seldon. Everyone is watching Bruce Seldon, trying to determine if he's being intimidated by Mike Tyson. On Friday, there were no signs of that. I look at Buster Douglas when he beat Mike Tyson. I also watch the, you know, I look at the fight, how he beat him, what it took to win, but I mainly pay attention to what he said after the fight, when he said how he stayed relaxed and he stayed calm, and he didn't let Tyson, nor Team Tyson, get up under, the, under his skin. I'm joined now by USA Today boxing columnist John Saraceno. John, we got a good look at the fighters. What did you think? Well, 229 pounds, Bruce Seldon was his lightest in three and a half years. It's obvious he's really gotten ready for this fight. But in boxing, remember, it is better to fight good than to look good. What about Tyson? Well, Mike Tyson, he came in at a good weight. When Tyson's below 220 pounds, he has very fast hands. But the one thing I noticed was that Tyson did not have that heavy armor of muscle like he did for Peter McNeely. Would there be a tactical reason for that, or is that just coincidental? Well, it leads me to believe that Tyson hasn't done as much weight work in the gym, and also possibly he's worked more on a cardiovascular aspect, expecting Selden to run jab and move so to speak exactly all right we'll have complete coverage of the post fight on sports center on saturday reporting from the mgm grand in las vegas with john saraceno i'm mark schwartz espn thanks mark seldon the boxers tyson the jockeys tyson is older smaller lighter and much much better he'll make 15 million seldon 5 million but seldon even if he wins this fight yeah can't take the WBC belt because of a court ruling explaining why it would take longer than the fight will likely last. Still ahead. Welcome back to Late Night. The countdown continues and the main event approaches. It's a respectful and chiseled Bruce Seldon that will step inside the ring Saturday night opposite Iron Mike Tyson. But those attributes, although noted, will not do much for Seldon versus the former champ. The tale of the tape was told Friday. Our Nick Charles translates the details from Las Vegas. Weight only matters in boxing if you have too much of it. But that was definitely not the case Friday afternoon here in Las Vegas when Mike Tyson and Bruce Seldon weighed in for their Saturday night rumble. Tyson arrived looking like a man in a hurry. He showed up early and then weighed in first at 219 pounds. Seldon followed at 229. Both men looked power-packed and ready to go. But before they left, Tyson won the preliminary rounds with an unflinching stare-down that made Seldon blink first. What was the stare-down all about? Tyson seemed to stare you down. Well, because that's Tyson. You know what I'm saying? He does that. He tries to intimidate his fighters by doing things like that. Did he intimidate you? Not at all, man. I let that go in and out. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I, don't, I don't fall into that trap because I know that's part of his game plan. Seldon's confidence will come into play only if he can get Tyson's respect through his punches. Tyson, though, clearly intends to go right after Selden. And so what we have are the following possibilities and probabilities. Bruce Selden uses the well-known boxing adage that styles make fights and that he has the style to stop Mike Tyson's express train cold. I think it's going to take being relaxed, staying calm, staying confident, and uh, utilizing what has been my claim to fame that's a good left jab uh, i believe you're gonna run and jab you know these guys believe that's the success of life tyson is contemptuous of even discussing strategy not because he's afraid of revealing too much but simply because he knows his game plan is the world's worst kept secret unbridled aggression my main objective is just to fight i don't look in front of my friends and say, well that's a good jab he has a good jab well i respect that that's good no i'm just I just want to kill them, you know, do my best. It's going to be a ferocious pace. Mike is going to come out on him, and he's going to just push him right across the ring. He's going to cut the ring off on him, be effective, throw a lot of combinations. Mike is going to be ferocious. But Selden feels he's learned by the fatal mistakes of Tyson's past opponents, who tried to outslug the supreme slugger. Now, I'm not going to take the fight to him. That's where a lot of the guys make their mistakes, by just going out thinking they're going to imitate Mike. 
beat him at his own plan. You know, I'm, I'm definitely not going to do that. Bruce Seldon can't match Mike Tyson's numbing power, but he can't run forever. And when he stops, Tyson fully intends to violate his space and then to tear him apart. Tyson can't afford to look ahead, but his next opponent can. Former heavyweight champion Evander Holyfield scheduled to fight Tyson here November 9th. And he says he intends to fool the critics who say that's a fight that's lost its allure. People say, who did you compete against? You can say, Joe Blow, and nobody know. But you say, well, I compete against Mike Tyson. Oh, I, I guess that was a tough fight. I'm saying, but these are the things that make one what you would consider great in the game of boxing. If you ain't fought nobody that considered great, then how could you say you're great? I'm saying, so it's good for the game. That's a story for November, though. The more immediate situation is Tyson Selden Saturday night. Join us same time right here for the complete story of who won and why, plus interviews with the winner and the loser. That, though, is the story right now from Las Vegas. Let's go back to Atlanta. Selden's manager says his fighter is an incredible athlete. He's fast, he's strong, he can run, he can jump. That's all great, but this isn't the NBA. Selden gets in the ring tonight with Mike Tyson, a man who likes to say he's in the hurting business. Mark Schwartz has our preview from Las Vegas. When you're facing Mike Tyson, you can't gain too much confidence by looking at his 44 wins. So Bruce Selden is taking a different tack. He's studying that other fight, the only one Mike lost. The one fight that he lost is like a replica of what I do. I box. I move, I have great lateral movement, I have great ability, I have great athleticism, and I think that's what's going to confuse Mike Tyson. Selden believes Tyson's stamina could be his Achilles heel. After all, he's fought less than seven rounds in five years. I definitely need to go deep into this fight. I feel as though getting Mike Tyson at least halfway, if I can get Mike Tyson halfway, if I can sustain his, his, his pressure and his straightforwardness for six rounds, he definitely, truly, from the bottom of my heart, he could not beat me. If he could take what I got to dish for 12 rounds, God bless him, he's going to take it. Joining me now is John Saraceno. And John, can Bruce Selden get anywhere near the 12th round? Good question. No heavyweight in boxing since Joe Frazier applies the kind of pressure that Mike Tyson does. He turns a 20-foot ring into a postage stamp. Also, Bruce Selden does not have the best chin in the heavyweight division. Prediction time. Well, in my opinion, the fight should not go beyond six rounds if Mike Tyson is able to cut off the ring, work Selden's body, and use his power shots. All right, we'll have complete post-fight coverage on ESPN, reporting from the MGM Grand in Las Vegas with John Saraceno. I'm Mark Schwartz, ESPN.